Hi there, in this video, first I am going to show you how symbols or tags can be defined. Then I'll show you how a project can be uploaded from a PLC. You will see that the symbols table is not transferred to Siemens PLCs. Then I'll explain and test set and reset actions. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller-based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright, let's start the video. If you remember, in the previous video, I've defined a new project, configured my PLC station, and also tested this simple program using the PLC Sim Simulator and also my PLC. Well, this program is very short and simple. But an industrial process needs a more complex program with a lot of uh, addresses, which can confuse us to detect each address represents the status of which input or output of the PLC station. In other words, which parameter in the industrial process. So I recommend you to define a suitable symbolic name or tag for each address. It can help us to understand the logic of the complex programs. To define a tag, I can right click on each address and select this item, edit symbols. Now I'm going to use a stop and a stop tags for these two inputs. Well, another way to define tags is using the symbol table under the options menu. Here you can see the defined tags and also add your all tags and then start the programming step. For example, let's define a tag for the output address q 0 out. Okay, as you see, all addresses in my program have a suitable tag. As I mentioned earlier, these tags only help us to understand the program's logic, but my CPU doesn't need them to execute my program. Note that under the view menu, I can determine whether the defined symbols should be displayed or not. Well, as you see, many actions have a shortcut in Semantic Manager. For example, let's use these shortcuts to see the defined symbols in my program again. Okay, let's save the program and close the current window. Well, as you see, there is a symbols icon next to the blog folders. I can use that to open the symbols table and define my tags. Alright, my computer is connected to my PLC directly using its MPI port. Let me transfer the current project to my PLC. Note that here is an important point. Semantic Manager transfers only necessary data, such as my program and configuration data. It doesn't transfer the defined tags inside the symbols table. All 
All right, I've transferred the project to my PLC. Now let's open the PLC menu and then select this option. Upload a station to PG to transfer the loaded project from the PLC station to my computer. Now let's click on the view button to find my PLC and then I need to click on OK. All right, now I have two PLC stations. The second one is uploaded by my PLC on my computer. Let's open its main block, OB1. As you see, the uploaded program doesn't have any symbol. Let's open the symbols table to check this point. As you see, there isn't any tag inside the symbols table. Remember, I configured my PLC station in the previous video. Now, if I open the hardware configuration window, you can see that the uploaded project includes the hardware information too. Okay, to have the defined tags inside the symbols table, I recommend you to save your projects on your computer after transferring that to your PLC. Now, let's do another test. Let me reset my PLC using its mini switch and then transfer its data to my computer. Alright, here is a new PLC station. Let's open its symbols table. Okay, the symbols table is empty. Now let's open the blog folders. As you can see, there isn't any organization blogs or program. We can see only the system data. So let's open the hardware configuration window. As you see, only the CPU model and the previous addresses are detected. For other modules, I need to double click on each module and then determine its order number to remove these question signs. All right, let me exit from the hardware configuration window and delete these two extra PLC stations. I recommend you before starting any project, first transfer the current data on your PLC to your computer. Also, after finishing your project and transferring that to your PLC, save that on your computer to have all data such as the symbols table. Now let's open the main block or be one to write and test some simple programs. Okay, as you see, the OB1 block includes one network. I can select the title for that and also write a comment. That's optional. Now, let me right click and select this item, Insert Network. Again, I can write a title or comment for the new network. Also, I can click on this icon to have more networks. So, as you see, a program inside the main block can be divided into some networks. On the left side, you can see the instructions that can be used. Now, let me use a SR instruction to rewrite my program inside the first network.
This instruction needs a bit of memory to work correctly. SR is an abbreviation of set and reset actions. I can use its first input to turn on an output and use the second one to turn off the output. As you see, in a set of writing addresses, I can use the defined tags. Now let's download the program and then test it. Okay, as you see, the performance of the programs inside the two networks are the same. Note that PLCs execute the whole program and then update their outputs. So if I press the start and stop push buttons at the same time, the SR instruction decides to turn on the second output and then decide to turn it off. Therefore, based on the last decision, my PLC turns off the second output. Alright, now let me compare the RS instruction with the SR. Note that the first input of this instruction turns off its output, and the second one enables its output. Okay, now let me save, download, and then test the program. Well, as you can see, the performances of the two networks are the same. But when I press the start and stop push buttons at the same time, the RS instruction turns on the first output, but the SR instruction turns off the second output. Note that you can use the set and reset instructions individually. Let me explain them using the help window. I can click on this question icon and select the reset instruction. Here you can see a description about the Reset instruction. This instruction can be used to reset a selected address to zero. Note that if I don't activate this instruction, it won't change the current state of the selected address. At the bottom, you can see some examples of using this instruction. Similarly, let's use the question sign to learn the set instruction. This instruction can be used only to set a specific address to 1. Alright, in this video, I'll explain the symbols table and also the set and reset instructions. In the next video, I'll explain other bit logic operands, and then I'll do a more practical project. Thanks so much for watching this video. Thanks for watching my content. If you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, 
then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.